Hudson County News. So we got quite a bit today. Uh, I think probably even a little bit more than usual. So first of all, we're not going to be talking about much else but U.S. Senator Bob Menendez and these indictments. Well, he appeared in court on Monday and that was on the superseding indictment charge accusing him of acting as a foreign agent to Egypt. He pleaded not guilty, of course, and uh, his statement there is a doozy, so that's going to be a lot of fun to talk to you guys about. We also, just this morning, a bit of breaking news, the local finance board in Trenton voted on a proposal from the Jersey City MUA. It was $157 million, and they only approved $102 million. So we're going to explain to you what that means and how we ended up at that point. It was a pretty long meeting for just one agenda item. We're also going to talk a little bit about what's going on in Hoboken. You know, we just heard that on Friday the Israeli flag was stolen from City Hall. It has been re-raised since then, but there is an ongoing police investigation. So we're going to tell you what happened there and a whole lot more right after this word from our sponsors. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City, Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's saving, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state-of-the-art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201-867-2444 or visit us on the web today. Good friend self-storage, let us be your good friend. Hudson County View, live and uncut, John R. Heides. So as I mentioned just a few moments ago, like let's talk a little bit about this bit of breaking news with the local finance board and the MUA, a little complicated, but I think I have a pretty good grasp on what's going on here. So the local finance board in Trenton, they hear from various municipal and I think occasionally also county agencies for bonding, basically getting money from the state. They make these proposals. And uh, then the board votes on them, I mean, in simplest terms. But in this particular case, the Jersey City Municipal Utilities Authority came with $157 million. Now, $102 million was allocated for capital infrastructure improvements, and then $55 million was allocated for this new franchise fee with the city, as you guys have read uh, from myself and from the Jersey Journal, and maybe a couple others too. Uh, this franchise fee is something that they've wanted the council to vote on, but they pumped the brakes earlier this month when it looked like they, did, they may not have the votes. Uh, it was approved on first reading by a vote of 6-2. And uh, on that, you saw Councilman, uh, Wardy Councilman James Solomon vote no. Uh, Councilman at large, Danny Rivera, was absent. And uh, Ward C. Councilman Rich Baggiano also voted no. So more than likely will pass. However, it's going to take a while to get back there now, especially with this outcome. So what we saw here. Uh, was, it was like a two and a half hour meeting. Now granted more than half of that was in closed session, but that's a long time for just one agenda item. Certainly this is a large amount of money. The long story short, uh, as it comes from Executive Director Jose Cuda, is that the 100 million, uh, which he means 102 million in this case, would be a measure to address the more urgent drinking water infrastructure with the I-Bank, and that's the New Jersey infrastructure bank that you know, municipalities often bond with and meeting their maximum $40 million cap, which leaves us with no money conceivably for the next eight years. We know what separates us between a developing company is a water and sewer company that functions. It's that simple. Now, don't forget, back in January 22, the MUA said that they're going to spend $1.099 billion in the next decade on sewer and water drinking system upgrades as part of the settlement with the U.S. Department of Justice and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. 
So they have a lot to do. Uh, they also have those lead line replacements going on, and that's also running nearly concurrently. The timeline's only off by about four months, which also came up today. And that's no small project. That's $291 million in its own. Now, the franchise fee you've heard about quite a few times. We've seen former Governor Jim McGreevy, a likely candidate for mayor in 2025, has come out against this. And as I told you, a couple council members voted against it on first reading. Now, this is interesting because they made the argument through council that it benefits the MUA to extend the franchise agreement for 40 years to pledge revenues to bondholders for a 30-year term specific to the capital improvements. The current franchise agreement goes through 2027, and if they were to bond today, hypothetically, then they could only bond for four years. At least that was the contention of MUA council. Uh, that was Matthew Jessup of McMahon of Scotland and Bauman. And we heard from a couple commissioners, and basically they said, in a nutshell, that they weren't comfortable with this amount, and that they were gonna have to, they ended up going back into executive session, and after that point, we heard from uh, Acting Department of Community Affairs Commissioner Suarez, and she came out and she said, you know, the board just doesn't feel comfortable with this franchise agreement, which was evident if you were watching the meeting, and eventually they took a vote and approved the capital improvements, but they did not approve the franchise fee. So this looks like something that is gonna extend for a while. Uh, I don't really know what the next steps are. Uh, also of note, State Senators Michael Testa and DeClint O'Scanlan, both Republicans, came out against this, as did Jack Cittarelli. Of course, he was the nominee for governor 2021 and looks to be running again in 2025. So certainly him and Jersey City Mayor Stephen Fulop are not political friends or allies in any way, shape, or form. So whatever happens next, we're certainly going to keep you in the loop. Now, with that, we're going to uh, chat a little bit about this Portside Towers case. So this was a big one. Uh, this was another big red leveling board decision. You know, we talked about the one in Hoboken last week. Now this has been one that's been going on close to a year. I mean, they've been coming to every single council meeting, these tenants, and they've talked about unconscionable red hikes, you know, 20%, 30%, again, similar to that case in Hoboken. Now they had this hearing in June. It was uh, not too long, maybe like two to three hours. And this vote, you know, most people were expected to get home at midnight on a good day, and uh, this ended actually within probably 45 minutes max. And long story short, the board came out and they basically said, the exemption was not filed on time, therefore you cannot be rent exempt. So obviously, uh, you know, the community uh, among the tenants is just ecstatic about this decision. I would expect an appeal to come, but you know, there's nothing yet. We'll keep you up to speed. But a big win uh, for these Jersey City Portside Towers residents that have been fighting this for a really long time. I mean, in simplest terms, one of the commissioners said, in consideration of the illegal red petition appeal that has been presented to this board, I am making a motion. We do side with the tenants. The exemption from red control was not fulfilled by requirements. So that's the easiest way to put it right there, folks. And then talking about Senator Menendez, let's, uh, let's get into what he said after uh, he had to go to this court hearing in Manhattan on Monday. So again, this was a charge a, a superseding indictment specifically accusing him of being a foreign agent to Egypt. Of course, we've spoke about this case extensively. Uh, so I don't really think I need to say too much more. Uh, it's him and his wife Nadine. You have three businessmen, one of which owned a halal meat company. They have this federal contract and it's an exclusive contract that allows them to export halal meat with Egypt, the government of Egypt. So. The comment from uh, Senator Menendez was, uh, as I said earlier, a doozy. He's, his remarks, the government's latest charge flies on the face of my long record of standing up for human rights and democracy in Egypt and in challenging leaders of that country, including President El Sisi on these issues. Anyone who knows my record knows this latest charge is outrageous as it is absurd. I have been throughout my life loyal to only one country, the United States of America, the land my family chose to live in democracy and freedom. The facts haven't changed. The government is engaged in primitive hunting by which the president predator chases its prey until it's exhausted and then kills it, that tactic won't work. So that's a, uh, something you don't see every day. And I imagine we're gonna get a lot more of that between now and that June 2024 primary, whether Menendez is on the ballot or not. But with that folks, we're gonna take our first break and we're gonna be back with Hoboken Second Board Councilwoman Tiffany Fisher.
Anna Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at hannapintodevelopment.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, light rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. Tall screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you, Newport. Live like you want. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Hudson County View, live and uncut. John R. Heinis, as I mentioned a few moments ago, today I'm joined with Hoboken Second Ward Councilwoman Tiffany Fisher. Councilwoman, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. So obviously there's been a lot of conversations recently, probably two, three weeks, that, uh, about you to dry dock and an issue you know well. Now, your opponent and others have noted the basic facts, um, and then we got into a lot of other stuff. But look, it's a three-year lease approved by the council in February. It has that two-year option, and then you have a large group of people that includes your opponent that says it'll be over in five years we just got to mind the store so to speak and then we have people like yourself that says that's never going to happen so how did you end up at this place and what do you think about the opposing point of view sure i mean at the crux of the issue is where would new york or where would new york waterway go at the end of whether it's three years or five years right like right now where we are we're hoping that they build you know, a new operation site in Weehawken, but there's no evidence that they're actually moving in that direction. You know, we've spent the last, you know, seven years focused on trying to protect this site. And one of the things that we learned in the process from multiple reports is there literally is no other location for them. This is a critical transportation system for um, our region. It's a very important system for New Jersey Transit and their regional approach. And so I think when we get to the end of three years and there's no place for them to go, we're kidding ourselves if we think that they're just gonna leave or we have the ability to evict them. You know, there's a document that has an eviction clause, but what my opponent is really, like either she's unaware or she's just misleading the public is that New Jersey Transit has eminent domain powers just like we do, but their eminent domain powers, they supersede ours, right? We saw that, right? When New York Waterway originally went to acquire this, New Jersey Transit was behind them and, gave, and backstopped their acquisition and said, we will buy it from you so that it, it'll never be touched. Hoboken won't be able to touch it. Our mayor currently was able to push that off for a long period of time, excuse me, but that, that risk is real and we have to be vigilant about it. And, and I just don't see any scenario that says New Jersey Transit is going to let that site go. So obviously it's not your typical landlord tenant lease. It's not like, you know, I'm renting out someone's second floor or third floor, or whatever. But would it have the same concept? So again, um, that's because right now we're the landlord, right? So New York Waterway is our tenant. But, you know, at the end of year three, New Jersey Transit just says, yeah, we're just going to buy it. And suddenly New York or Hoboken doesn't have any standing or interest in that part of the site anymore. So it's, it's different that way. Okay. Now, another thing on this topic and also on the broader picture, your opponent has said that 
part of the reason it took so long, it was so expensive, was because you and your allies on the council voted no on this and other related things. So what, what do you think about that point of view? Yeah, so we never voted no. I mean, that was literally just a false statement, um, one of many that my opponent has made. Um, we've always voted yes. I mean, eminent domain is a long process. This isn't you just wake up and say, I'm going to offer eight, you know, eight dollars, seven dollars, whatever it is, and the judge just says yes. You go into a process. You have to um, bring an appraisal. Both sides bring an appraisal, and then the judge will determine what the market value is, and you agree on the price, and you come out of it. So that is what the process is, and the process decided that the value was thirteen and a half million. We actually ended up paying eighteen and a half million because we agreed to pay an extra five million dollars. Um, to New York Waterway so they wouldn't challenge the result of that eminent domain because it was already two years later. So we just kind of said, we'll give you an extra $5 million if you'll just agree in, to the settlement and go away. So right. that's how we got to 18 and a half. Now, a lot of people seem to be of the belief, as you alluded to already, that this Weehawkins Ferry refueling station that they've had for all these years is not going to be there much longer. Um, so why do you feel that way? I mean, we haven't heard much from Weehawken on this topic. Um, so if you actually look at, like, it, it, first of all, we know Mayor Turner has said to, out loud, repeatedly, I don't want New York Waterway here. I want to see them go, right? If you look at how they built out their waterfront, it's a beautiful park right behind it. It's where their 9-11 memorial is. They just announced a month or so ago a huge luxury residential development right on the empty lot that is where a lot of the people that work for New York Waterway actually park. So all signs are saying, you know what, we are building this out to be a beautiful luxury area, not one that will have a re refueling station in front of it. Um, and to be honest, we've not seen any evidence whatsoever that New York Waterway has even started, you know, filing applications um, to the planning board there. At the planning board here, they, you know, j just joked and said, oh, you know, we know Mayor Turner's not supportive, but, you know, we'll apply anyway. Well, Mayor Turner sits on the planning board. He points, appoints everyone on the planning board. So there's nothing out there that suggests that they will be able to move forward and get approvals in uh, Weehawken. And if we believe and to believe anything to the contrary, I just think is silly. Okay. So rats, what have, what's been done to date? What needs to be done? What would you like to see be done? Yeah, I mean, what's been done to date um, for rats? First of all, you know, we the administration um, basically started late on this. You know, this is generally an administration that loves putting out headlines on, you know, sunshine and unicorns, um, but difficult topics they are slow to embrace. And it was a lot of public pressure that finally got them to say, okay, we need to do something. And they did by this past summer by putting the first um, citywide lid ordinance out. And they've made some, we've made some positive citywide improvements that actually I think are beneficial. But what we really need, what I believe we really need to do is focus on hotspots. On 15th Street where I live, you know, rats were never an issue, but about Six months ago, there was a giant rat infestation behind a property, actually the building that my opponent lives in. And we've been working with all the building managers and taking a, you know, a block-by-block -block approach to address it on 15th Street, and we're still not there. But, and what we need to do is address the entire city um, on a block-by-block, hotspot-by-hotspot basis. I had done a survey that got um, responses from 550 people, I mapped everything out. We identified hotspots citywide. I shared the information um, with the city, and I think that you have, you know, the considerations at Pier A Park are different than 15th Street, different, at, you know, than Third and Madison, and you need to have kind of the local stakeholders, you know, really approach um, the issues on a local level. We haven't done that, but I'm confident that we will. Very good, Councilwoman, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere yet. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsors. <laughs> Anna Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintodevelopment.com. Panna Pinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. 
Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, Light Rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one pass stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you. Newport. Live like you want. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Hudson County View live on Uncut. John Arhida is still here with Hoboken Second Ward Councilwoman Tiffany Fisher. So extrapolating on an earlier point, now your opponent has said something to the effect that you're just up there to create chaos, undermine the mayor, make yourself look good, maybe potentially run against him, and uh, that's kind of why you do what you do. So your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I couldn't disagree more. Every day I literally just fight for Second Ward residents. Um, my res the Second Ward residents know that I prioritize their quality of life first. Um, we get more done in the second ward than any other um, ward. As a matter of fact, I just put a marketing material together and just kind of listed, you know, all of the quality of life improvements that we've been able to achieve. And the list was so long that the mailer ended up having to be a lot bigger than I originally thought. Like we, I have a great working relationship with the administration um, on important issues. I am able to have a conversation, um, you know, with the mayor. And, you know, my, my opponent, you know, is just showing to the second ward and to Hoboken, quite frankly, that she really just thinks that the mayor needs a yes vote. And you know what? I'm a yes most of the time vote, right? Probably 85% of the time we support all of the, you know, all of the policies and legislation that comes out of the city. But 15% of the time we challenge. And, and that's when we get to have a real debate. That's when we make sure that the public's interests are represented um, on issues. And we take something that may not be in the, that we feel may not be in the best interest for the public. And we can take it from either good to great or bad to better or something. And, you know, debate is important. And, and I think the, um, you know, the message that uh, my opponent is saying is it's less important to her. All right. Now, two items that just came up yesterday. One, we heard that there was an Israeli flag at City Hall that was raised about two weeks ago, and it got stolen on Friday. Police investigation. Fairly straightforward, but thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, just awful. I, I think most people know that I'm Jewish, and so anti-Semitism is something that, you know, I've grown up with. It's, you know, part of just when you grow up in a Jewish family, it's just always something that um, you talk about, you think about, you, you see maybe different than other people. And something as simple as um, stealing the symbol of Israel right now, especially right now with everything going on over there, feels, you know, particularly offensive. Um, you know, I hope that the uh, Hoboken police will be able to um, find who did this. And, you know, in, in a place like Hoboken where we don't, have a lot of hate it stands out more and i just you know i'm i'm happy that the entire community typically comes out and and really fights against hate like this okay point taken for sure now uh probably the final point now you also saw yesterday that the new jersey department of health through a deputy commissioner i believe it was on friday wrote a letter and said that they have high concern about the hoboken university medical mm -hmm. center's finances and they <coughs> intimated that they weren't going to keep giving them handouts going forward and that they haven't followed the plan, they haven't posted certain things on their website, et cetera. So your thoughts on this and any, anything you could tell us going forward? Yeah, you know what, it was uh, both sad and alarming to read that letter. Um, they, I'm hopeful because I know that they've been 
um, excuse me, I know that they've been uh, focused on cost cuttings. We know some of the policy changes they've made. We also know that they've been focused on growing their revenues. They've expanded certain um, services in certain areas of the hospital that have been very successful. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe that letter was more backward looking and that they're repositioning, you know, for improvements in the future. You know, clearly having a hospital in Hoboken is important to all residents in, Ho in Hoboken, so I would hate this to continue in a direction that would put th something like that at risk. Right. All right. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. But uh, maybe a related note, maybe not. Robert Wood Johnson Barter Miss Health has this location, not exactly sure the scope, but opening at uh, 59 Newark yeah. two days after the election. Uh, you know, any, anything you could tell us on that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know much. Um, I know they're opening um, an outlet here. They, we have a lot of the healthcare, statewide healthcare systems um, have offices here. We haven't had Robert Woods Johnson, so it's good to have them. Um, I, I think it's more probably coincidental than anything. I do know at one point Robert Woods Johnson was interested in Hoboken Hospital, but I also know some of the other healthcare systems were interested um, as well when it was a little bit more, felt like it was a little more in play. You know, it's, it's difficult for a hospital to just close. Hoboken is a very um, important hospital, not only to Hoboken, but to the region. So I think it would probably be a good asset to a maybe a more stable um, hospital system if for some reason CarePoint can't get itself, you know, out of this. Um, and having all these other systems in Hoboken is just good for Hoboken residents. Okay, makes sense. Any, any closing thoughts? No, listen, just that, uh, you know, it's the last two weeks of election. Everyone is super crazy. Uh, this is uh, the exciting time. People are really, you know, uh, elections in Hoboken are like no other. People come out, they wear shirts, they wear signs. So I hope everyone participates. I hope everyone votes. If you're in the second ward, I've worked really hard for you for um, the last eight years, and I'm excited to work for the next four if you'll have me. So I hope you'll vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thanks for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. We're not done yet. We'll be right back. Anna Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintodevelopment.com. Anna Pinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, light rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one pass stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you. Newport. Live like you want. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. So let's talk about a fun one. It's about 2025 here in Jersey City. So everybody knows that we're going to Jim and Ruby and uh, Hudson County Commissioner Bill Day, the second district, all but guaranteed to run, even though we're 24 and a half months away, give or take. But an interesting one is that the order of energy in Japan has been an advocate, a friend, 
a uh, political ally, for McGreevy, and now he's running with Tom Bertolli, and as you know, Bertolli is somebody that's done campaigns for decades. The can have crossed paths many times, and after I spoke with them both on Monday, it was quite abundantly clear they really don't like each other. So, now, when I spoke to McCann, uh, he said, whoever becomes the mayor is going to inherit a tremendous, tremendous problem. This is three years in a row we're operating at a deficit. Am I supporting Jim McGreevy? Absolutely. Am I running his campaign? Absolutely not. And uh, so nothing crazy, right? But then when I spoke to Bertoli, he said, Jim McGreevy is a friend of mine, but I'm not in any way, shape, or form running his campaign. From what I'm told, Jerry McCann is running ca his campaign. The last time Jerry McCann was running a campaign was the Jersey City mayoral special election in 2004 when he supported Lou Manzo, and we know how that ended. Whatever goodwill Jim has in the African-American community will go right down the tubes if he has Jerry running the campaign. Now, Manzo lost to then-councilman Jeremiah Healy by about three and a half percentage points, but that was the farthest thing from this story. McCann responded, and he said if Jim had Tom Bertoli running the campaign, he'd be in trouble with the FBI and IRS. What he fails to realize is I had nothing to do with Lou Manzo's campaign. I was a supporter while Bertoli was working on the campaign. And this was a fun back and forth that continues, but I will just let you know that Bertoli ended with that the last time I was on the opposing side of Jerry McCann in a school board race, I kicked his ass. So yes, a lot of hard feelings there, as I mentioned. Two quick hits, I guess we'll call it, Jersey City Ward F. Councilman Frank Educational Gilmore supported the Children First team of the Jersey City Board of Education race. So I believe that's the fourth council member to make an endorsement. And also Bayonne Hospital, the Bayonne Medical Center, honored the late H. Mickey McCabe with a dedication and plaque ceremony yesterday. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call it a week. See you soon.